Despite being protected in the womb, air pollution still affects unborn babies. Pregnant women who breathe polluted air could have babies with smaller head sizes and low birth weights. This makes these babies prone to several health complications later in life, including coronary artery disease, type 2 diabetes, and asthma. After reviewing a decade's worth of research evidence from around the world, researchers found that exposure to air pollutants, especially nitrogen dioxide, can cause smaller head sizes in a baby. And it's most toxic to baby's health during the final three months of pregnancy. Nitrogen dioxide is primarily generated by vehicle traffic, but can be present in the home from cigarette smoke or butane and kerosene heaters and stoves. How does air pollution reach a baby who is protected in the womb of a mother? One study showed that air pollution can infiltrate the placenta of unborn babies by their mother's lungs. For the study, researchers examined the placenta of five non-smoking pregnant women who had recently given birth by C-section. They found soot particles in each mother's placenta, an indication that particulate matter from air pollution is ingested by the mother's lungs and travels to the organ she uses to nourish her developing fetus. Fine particulate matter is made up of tiny particles from a variety of emissions, such as diesel emissions and agricultural fires. The particles, smaller than 2.5 micrometers in diameter, are considered harmful because they can lodge deep in the lungs, affecting the pulmonary and cardiovascular systems. Small, unseen particles and air pollution inhaled by pregnant women may also damage the cardiovascular system of the unborn baby and delay its growth and development. One study looked at how the circulatory systems of pregnant rats and their fetuses were affected by a single exposure to nano-sized titanium dioxide aerosols during their first, second, and third trimesters. The results were compared to pregnant rats that were exposed only to high-efficiency filtered air. The researchers found that exposures to pollutants early in gestation significantly impact a fetus's circulatory system, specifically the main artery and the umbilical vein. Later exposure had the most impact on fetal size since the restricted blood flow from the mother deprives the fetus of nutrients in this final stage. The study found that one exposure late in pregnancy can restrict maternal and fetal blood flow, which can continue to affect the child into adulthood. Air pollution is also a contributing factor in millions of premature births around the world each year. Nearly 15 million babies are born annually before reaching 37 weeks of gestation. Premature birth is the leading cause of death among children younger than 5 years old and can cause lifelong learning disabilities, visual, and hearing problems. Research shows that as many as 3.4 million premature births across 183 countries could be associated with fine particulate matter. These stats and studies are alarming, but what can be done to curb air pollution? And what will happen if we continue polluting our air? The fact that children are being affected by our actions even before they are born is frightening on its own, but the long-term impacts of environmental neglect go far beyond these consequences. But that's a topic of discussion for another episode. Mm -hmm.